So now the new chapter, chapter number eight, input tax credit. And the coverage in this chapter is section 16 to section 21 and the rules are from rule number 36 to 45. Most important chapter for GST and in fact the entire law is based on this chapter only. Because in the first chapter if you remember we talked about that why the GST has been brought in. So that there is a complete chain of credit and the next person in the chain pays tax only on the value addition done. So who can avail credit for what, when and how the credit is to be utilized everything we are going to talk in this chapter. Right? Without knowing this chapter nothing is known in GST. It is so important chapter. Right? Now what is expected by the institute that is given in the learning outcomes. Number one describe what are inputs, input service, capital goods and other relevant terms in relation to input tax credit. ITC stands for input tax credit. Okay. Now this input tax credit is available to a person who is liable to pay GST without liability no credit right so the first thing required is he should be liable to pay tax right so by chance if a person is engaged in an activity which is non taxable no credit because there is no tax liability and now for carrying on any business three things are mainly required first is capital goods number two inputs number three input services right everything is defined we'll talk about that little later but the person who's liable to pay tax he is using capital goods for carrying on business and inputs and input services are being used in relation to that business so when a person receives a supply of capital goods input input services and he has paid any amount of tax on that right he is entitled to avail credit of the amount of that tax and that credit will be utilized when he makes the supply of the goods or services so effectively he will end up paying additional tax at the time of his supply only for the value addition that he has done right so assume that somebody is acquiring some goods worth rupees 1000 this is the value and on this he ends up paying 150 rupees as a GST total amount he is paying 1150 right but his cost is this only right later on he sells the same item for 1500 right now again GST assuming the same rate so GST will be 225 right now this 225 is discharged in two parts that is 150 rupees by way of input tax credit and remaining 75 he pays in cash. This is payable by way of cash. So effectively what he has done he is paying only for the value addition carried out. Right. Now if we change this figure 
instead of 1500 if he supplies this again for 1000 rupees to somebody he procured for 1000 and supplied also for 1000 what is the tax liability 150 and he is already having the creditor 150 no further liability right so this becomes a value addition tax so if there is a value addition there is additional tax if there is no value addition there is no additional tax value addition is that only right whatever with the value addition whether by way of manufacturing or by way of trading or by way of providing services so ultimately it is an increase of the value value increase for whatever reason that is value addition right so on the subsequent supply tax is payable only for that part additionally right so that is the idea of this chapter why input tax credit is point number two says explain the various conditions timelines restrictions and processes for taking input tax credit on goods or services in general and special circumstances so this is talking about the conditions for availing the credit when the credit can be availed so this credit is on supply yes. right who will avail the credit the recipient right the recipient is what person he will be having some document on the basis of which he is going to make the payment so two things are important number one he should be in possession of the relevant document number two he should be in possession of the goods or the services should have been received and the third and most important aspect that these should be in relation to business some supply received but it has nothing to do with business no credit some more conditions are there but these are basic conditions number one document number two position number three in relation to business right so if these and other conditions prescribed are fulfilled only then credit can be availed otherwise credit cannot be then there is a time limit within which credit has to be availed it is not unlimited that tomorrow today you find an invoice which is two years back and today you want to avail the credit of that no the maximum time limit prescribed for availing the credit is one year from the date of invoice in relation to the supply either invoice or some other document maximum period given is one year so whether those are capital goods or input or input services maximum period given is one year and in that also another condition prescribed is that if you avail the credit on the basis of the document and you don't make the payment in relation to that within 180 days from the date of that invoice of the document credit will have to be reversed payment of the supply plus tax both should be completed within 180 days right then the credit will continue otherwise credit will have to be reversed but then when in as and when payment is made later credit can be availed again and in that case the period of one year will not be applicable because that is re-availing the credit the time limit is for availing the credit this is re-availing which has been reversed earlier why reversed because the payment for the supply along with the tax has not been done and the time limit is 180 days from the date of invoice or other document on the basis of which credit has been availed right so everything we are going to talk about in detail i'm just explaining what is expected by the institute when you have read this chapter thoroughly point number three says identify the items on which itc is available and also in the blocked items on which itc is not available in general any of the goods are procured any of the services procured which have nothing to do with the furtherance of the business no credit because the objective is 
reducing the tax burden on the next supply so when the goods and services are procured for personal use the question of next supply does not arise question next supply does not arise that is one case another case where credit is not available goods procured from a person who is under the composition scheme isn't it composition scheme you have already studied so if the goods are procured from that person credit is not available what will happen if the goods are procured from an unregistered person no reverse charge mechanism becomes applicable for the time being government has said hold on but it it is good provision is already there so the value of the supplies from unregistered supplier in a day exceed 5000 rupees then tax becomes payable the credit is available for that also whatever is paid in the rc if i receive some supply on which i have to pay tax under rcm i will pay and then avail the credit of that amount so credit will not be available when the supply is received from a person under composition scheme just examples this is not complete right because the point is there it is saying when itc is not available so you must have an idea when the itc is not available next point says explain the concept relating to availing of the proposed itc when common inputs input services capital goods are used or intended to be used for the exempted and taxable supplies of the business and non business activities now this is something interesting understand what i we are talking about we said the input tax credit is available for capital goods inputs and input services right now there may be a supply which is going to be used for business and personal right now first of all there has to be a proportion that to what extent you are going to use it other than business personal means other than business the credit will not be available for this right then in business again two parts going to be used for taxable supply and non taxable supplies and we have non taxable supply we also have exempt supply right now you can correlate where and what to what extent credit should be available isn't it so when there is no tax liability no further supplies in these cases there is no tax liability so credit will be available only to this extent right now in one supply how do you find to what extent supply is in relation to business and going to be used for taxable supply 